Hey guys, come in the shop real quick. Maggie and I are building a really cool project and you're not gonna wanna miss this. Also, um, if you're ever visiting Maker's Playground, don't stand behind the doors. Make sure you don't cast your oil. On with it. So if you follow us on our other social media channels, you know that things have been changing around here. One of those changes is we're bringing in some other equipment. For instance, like the Onefinity sitting behind us. A big thank you to Onefinity for working with us on that. And we're bringing in some lasers and some other things. The, the point is we're building a school to help folks learn how to start businesses, create businesses, all based around this type of technology. Now with the smaller form CNC's and lasers, we're gonna need to be able to break sheet goods down pretty often. And we wanna make that convenient. We've just used sawhorses in the past and half the time the sawhorses are being used for something else. So what I've done is designed a bench that folds up into this little, you know, compact package, unfolds really quickly, handy to use, because if it's not handy to use, we're not gonna use it. What's really cool about this bench though is it has a lifting um, assist, we'll call it that. The task of breaking down sheet goods is falling more and more on Maggie's shoulders since I'm spending more and more time in the chair. The other really cool thing about this project is you can build the whole thing out of one four by eight sheet of plywood. Right. Right. The funny thing is I don't actually have a full sheet of plywood. But we do have some big scrap pieces like this laying around. I'm gonna cut out all the parts I need from the scrap plywood that I've got. We'll do a little routering and then we can do some assembly. I need to cut a channel in each one of these like this. And to do that, I just made this really simple router jig. Now I didn't spend a lot of time making this. I just glued a three quarter inch piece of material to some half inch material. I laid it out and then took it over to the bandsaw and carefully cut it out. You want to spend a little time on this because you want to have a nice fit on the, your, on your channels. I just want to line up with my marks and then go ahead and pencil out a line so I can rough some of that material out of there. And I'm just going to do that with my jigsaw. I'm gonna line it back up. I'm gonna go ahead and clamp that in place. I wanna make sure I leave my, make my jig big enough that I can clamp it far enough back that the base of my router won't interfere with the clamping scenario. And just like that, by using the flush trim bit, we've got a really nice finish. These are the legs. And just like before, we cut them out on the table saw and then did this little L glue up. Something we did that's interesting is I cut a small little rebate in the end of this to help me position this. We'll show you that here in a second. But because I'm gonna be running saw blades over the top of this, I don't want any metal up top. So I used a nail gun that shoots composite nails at the top, and then I used a regular nail gun to finish off fastening. I'm not actually gonna screw this together. The glue and the nails are plenty good to hold this together. And because it's something I wanna make a few of as they get beat up, I'm just gonna do it as fast as we can. So just like we cut the other cross members, these are the pieces that are gonna like make this whole thing fold up. We need to use some hinges. These are some uh, solid heavy duty door hinges. They're three and a half inches tall. And we picked ones that just don't have a lot of play when they're open. This section here is about seven inches tall. So if I install those on the bottom, even when I'm using a big saw, there's no chance that a saw blade would cut through and hit the hinge. So I'm gonna lay that out here, center mass, and then I'm gonna go ahead and chisel that out. That's her first one ever. She did awesome. Now you'll notice I have these lifted off the work surface a little bit. That's because these screws are too long and they're gonna go all the way through the workpiece and I don't want them in my workbench. Now this is just, again, a rough and tumble uh, bench we're building, so I'll just flip it over and grind those down when we're done putting it together. So when I put these screws in, I'm gonna push them that way, a little bit of center, so when I tighten this down, it's gonna pull everything together.
we've got the table laid out and the stretcher pieces in. Now the next thing we need to do is add some little blocks right here on the side. And that's going to keep it from wanting to swing too far. And when these are pushing out, that'll keep the leg kind of open throughout the process. Now once we have those on, we'll put the back sides on and then we'll be able to see if this thing's actually going to fold up. Do it right. <laughs> That's perfect. So we've turned it right side up, and this is actually a lot sturdier than I expected it to be with just these hinge points. But I want to add a little extra security here. So we're going to put a block in here, screw it to one side, and then we'll use a knob on the other side to tighten it down when it's in this position. Forgot what I was going to say. Let's just do it. Do <laughs> To make the knob positions, I'm going to drill first through both pieces with the 3 16 drill bit. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, then I'm going to close the whole thing, drill through with a quarter inch on this side, and then put some threads in here, some quarter 20 threads. So I can just take a knob, tighten it down on here, and that'll lock this in open position. All right, I'm doing the same thing here. So now it's in its closed position, and I want to be able to lock it in its closed position. So again, I'm just going to go center mass, I'm going to drill a 3 16 hole through and then we'll tap everything out and drill a quarter inch hole so the knobs will fit in here. <laughs> Much better. All right, so these are loading arms and they're going to attach right here. We can put a piece of material on it and then lean it up onto the table. So Peggy doesn't have to lift it up onto the table or uh, neither do I. Because these are going to get a lot of use, I'm not just going to do with threads in the wood. I'm going to actually put some inserts in on these. So we've got it all put together. A couple things we did off camera is on the bottom you'll see that we put some pieces of plywood and that's really just so these don't fall out. And for the spanners we created this little L piece of plywood here that captures them so the, everything is held in this one little 40 inch by you know I guess 13 inch package. <laughs> so what do you think? I like it. Think it's going to make it a little easier for you? Mm-hmm. I got something else that's going to make it easier for you too. What? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to replace the track saw. No more clamps are going to be needed. That will vacuum down to the material and you can just cut stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you just measure out your, take your measurement. You put it up against this thing right here, right along this edge on both sides. Turn on the grabo. And then flip that up. And it's designed to work with this black saw. Just put that right up against that edge and cut. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. We are going to get a ton of use out of this. We even put a little place where we can mount the track saw guide on this unit. So we have everything all in one place. That's going to come in handy with a lot of the materials that we have to break down. A couple points that we need to probably touch on 
There will be plans available for this. They're not quite done yet. As soon as they are, I'll put them in the description box below and you can always find them on my website, izzyswan.com. The other thing, some of you may have noticed the knobs that we were using in here were epoxy knobs. We actually make and sell forms so you can make your own knobs, which is really handy because then you can use any type of fastener, size fastener that you want to use. You don't have to hunt down something and then wait for days to get it in the mail or you know, chance finding it at a hardware store. Uh, so these are really handy. If you want to check those out, again, link is down in the description box below. Megan, I hope that you found this build entertaining and interesting and uh, maybe give you some ideas for your own projects. Also, don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell notification next to it so you get notified when we post new videos. And I guess that about does it. We'll see you in the next video.